back, everyone, to the UMG Prime $2,500 4 4 variant, of course, here taking place on January 5th. It's myself, Landon Lando Sanders, joined alongside by Jen, a.k.a. Lemon Kiwi from home. Jen, yet again, we're taking a look at the guys from GGE8.Orange as they face off now in their current semifinal matchup versus the guys on Gravity. And uh, this one should be interesting now entering into back onto f or, you know, what am I saying? Into best of fives rather than best of threes, of course. And back on that regular competitive rotation as a Gibraltar will be at number one. I'm number one, as you say, it is Gibraltar and pretty much full team wipe there. GG EA Orange starting in the advantage and now taking the lead as your main hill player here. Mayhem, we sitting comfortable here, but you can see the setup here from Gravity taking up this high ground and completely surrounding him. Oh. He's trying to stay alive, but cannot. This is going to be a retake here from Gravity as that was a nice two piece there from Animal to start out. I used to say Mayhem got bagged in that situation. Uh, definitely oh my God. wasn't able to really pick up that kill in that situation. But uh, right now, it is the guys on Gravity currently with a little bit of a lead as they're locking down some seconds. But keeping in mind, though, those last blue arrows coming in from Council Road are starting to get taken out. Nice nade coming in from Spoofs regardless, but their rotation getting ready to come underway. And it looks like uh, Caesar Skies and the guys from Gravity are set up ready to go as the STG-44s are out to play. Well, this is a pretty close lead now heading into Fort Courtyard. It's going to be Gravity to have those preferable spawns. And you can see your kill feed is still all in favor of Gravity. GGEA Orange are trying to throw some nades in, trying to infiltrate the positioning here from Gravity. But it's just not looking good. And we're currently on board here with Caesar Skies on a five streak. And I completely jinxed him as it's going to be M-Shake trying to be on your kill feed as much as he can. Gravity taking at least a 30 second lead. But it's Castle Road that's going to be a huge money hill. And most likely GGEA EA Orange are going to give up most of the scrap time to set up for that one, and this should be where they are able to equalize the score here. But you got to keep in mind as well, as if Gravity can grab the last 15 seconds, they also have streaks to work with, and you see uh, Hate, who's currently blocking those spawns out, he's obviously going to be a factor, but like I said, we have, I believe, Skies, who currently has a glide bomb and a fighter pilot to work with, so they can easily cut out the guys from GGEA on this hill, and I know you just talked about it, Jen, as Hate is still staying alive in the back of the base. Castle Road can definitely be a money hill when it comes down to Gibraltar. And while signs are looking good for Orange at the moment, if streaks come in, they can definitely start to play spoiler. But here they come. Hate in the back lines doing some damage on a three spree. The fighter pilot does the damage necessary. And just like that, hill control goes back the way of gravity as the rich are quite literally getting richer as Skies continuing to destroy with the PPSH. Lingering inside a mid map takes out Mayhem while Believe does get the trade. It still does not equal out to much of a point differential as 92 to 16 utter dominance being shown from the guys on Gravity at the moment. Well, that was a fantastic retake from Gravity. And keep in mind, there's two players on Gravity that are triple positive starting out this game hot. And, you know, usually Castle Road is extremely hard to break when you don't have the early rotation for it, which were actually in favor of GGEA Orange at the beginning. And then the quick retake there from, I believe it was Caesar Skies and Nick Hake that came from behind. And now with only a couple sec seconds left in Castle Road, huge lead. Now pretty much 90, 80 points in favor of Gravity Gaming as we do head into turret. It's going to be more streaks coming in from the side of Gravity. It picks off OK Believe from the hill, but he's still got two teammates who should be able to jump into this one. But there's a flood from Cave coming in from Gravity. And along with the scoring differential at the top of your, uh, you know, obviously scoreboard there, we can obviously take a look at the right side of that at the player's stats at the moment. Believe 2 and 11 is now 2 and 12, having a incredibly Difficult performance. The Skies is making things look easy. Finding headshot after headshot. He's got streaks yet again. And like I said, if you're the guys on GGEA Orange, you've got to be worried at this point. You're giving away the last 20 seconds on the turret. And at the end of the first set of rotations, you've only got 20 seconds to your name. While the other team is going to have well over 150 most likely. But just as I start to say that, I believe they do hop out of the hard point. While Hate also earns streaks now. Only 25 points away from a fighter, or excuse me, from a glide bomb. And he's going to maybe find that one, but no. Finds two players in his line site. Can't shut down either two of them. And that's really the only positive to be looking at right now for the guys on GGEA. At least another player didn't earn streaks. But speaking of such, this guy's quite literally coming from it as he's now 17 and 6 after calling in that fighter pilot. And just absolutely on a tear right now as the guys from GGEA have definitely been caught off guard, it's fair to say and are still having issues as they're down well over 120 seconds. 
Yeah, this is a pretty huge deficit, and the only real time that we saw Orange get was at the beginning of Pit Center fighting over that, and a little bit of the early rotations onto Castle Road. Now they're finally able to step onto the hill. This is Spoofs. This is the guy who dropped 40, a 40 bomb, like, yeah. a game ago, if like, less than half an hour ago, and now is struggling. Double negative right now. At least he's trying to rack up the team. But the trap shot there from M Shake. He's able to retake the hill. No trades go back and forth. Now it's a battle of the high ground where Nova's able to get the two piece and throw himself into the hill for the last couple seconds. Now a glide bob coming in. I believe that was side from gravity, but they've already got the spot set up for courtyard. Not able to find the kills, but they know where the push is coming from now. Yeah, this is where we saw the Guys from Gravity really start to take a big lead. Was off the hand of Skies, and he's continuing to dominate. Triple positive. Spoofs, as well, along with Believe, trying to play for the spawns. As Believe right now, currently quadruple negative. Having issues, to say the least. And while he does take out one, Skies is here, has to back up. Playing for streaks probably yet again. Imshake sees an unfortunate fate. But Nova falls, and just like that, all four players spawning in the back of the base there for Castle Road. We'll see how things do play out now, because in similar situations, Skies was the man who played spoiler. He had streaks to work with, and now only about 120 points off of them again. We could be seeing the guys from GGE8 rotate correctly, but also lose that spawn because of either hate sneaking behind enemy lines or a glide bomb coming to totally ruin an entire setup, and it looks like those streaks aren't even needed. Three fall, and right now the confidence has got to be dwindling if you are the guys on GGEA. I mean, the other team has reached 200 points, and you're not even at 50 yet. And I think when we were kind of talking about both these teams, and the reason we've seen them have so much success, Jin, is we talked about these sub-players. Spoof, Mayhem, they've been really dominating. They dominated it on Arden Forest and had some really solid games when it came down to that particular game mode for the most part. But this is a map where subs really don't reign true very often. I mean, you're going to have a few subs kind of linger around the map, but a lot of the time it's the AR play that can really kind of break that up or it can really kind of start off runs and whatnot. So I think it's not surprising to see Spoofs currently struggling along with uh, Mayhem. But right now it's Believe as well. 6-20. and 20. He's usually a guy who's going to have the AR in his hands. And when he's struggling like this, I think it's just the overall momentum that we're seeing from Gravity make its way forward. And we have to keep in mind that this man's guys is literally on an 11 kill spree. 30 and 7, making it look like a pub. This guy is absolutely destroying right now. As only eight more seconds are needed for Gravity to lock in this game, number one. And this isn't even close. And this is the semifinal. This, this is a struggle, but Caesar Skies is always all over your kill feed. And now you just saw him on an 11 streak. He's the one reigning in kill streaks along with the rest of his team and GGEA Orange, because they're losing most of their gunfights, at least 50% of their gunfights to Caesar Skies are not able to put enough bodies on the rotation to at least secure the spawns, which is the most important part here of Gibraltar. Although, yes, winning your gunfights is important, but getting spawns for Courtyard and Castle are so important. They're losing all those kills onto rotation. So this is such a devastating score here, 250-244, where only two players on the side of Orange get the double-digit kills. Yeah, and, and speaking of kills, I believe 31 and 8 is how Skies into finishing off that map number one. But I think we can kind of take, I mean, I think generally the map was probably going to go the way of gravity. Not to that extent. I was not at all imagining that we were going to see a, a big swing uh, as far as the overall scoring in that particular side. But generally, like I said, when we talked about GE, GGEA Orange's overall performance, and we talked about the hard point that they faced off. Let's actually take a look at my notes really quick. So they faced off against Amity, lost one on St. Marie Dumas. That's not a map that usually subs can really dominate on. I mean, granted, there, are, there obviously are times where a lot of the times it's, it's pretty even as far as, like, ARs to SMGs. They end up losing that map. We see them play on Arden Forest, have a really easy time. That's off the back of Spoof and Mayhem having a big performance. It's as if that if Spoof and Mayhem aren't really kind of going off and what really kind of propels them to having solid games is based on the maps, then they're going to have to kind of linger and kind of hope that, hey, hopefully we have an Arden Forest. Hopefully we have a really decent sub map that's coming up for us because if not, we're really going to struggle. And that's obviously the case here in Hardpoint and Gibraltar. They lose this one by getting only 44 seconds. Other team had 250. And I think they had some good moments. I know they were setting up for Castle Road. Uh, both times the rotation came around, and the first time it was, I believe it was Skies who ended up earning early streaks, uh, who kind of ruins the party. Hate ends up making it behind enemy lines, I believe through flanking in cave, and they're not really fully aware of that either. So they had some good rotations, but it was kind of like I said, the rich getting richer, the streaks kind of paying off later in the game for spawns, which later pays off for points, which obviously pays off for winning in a game. And like I said, it, it was Skies' playground there and that, and on Gibraltar. He was just absolutely having a heyday. They couldn't miss a shot. They were feeling good after already 
kind of dominating early on in the game. And uh, I think while GGEA kind of wipes it away from their memory, we talked about their issues sometimes in Search and Destroy. We've only seen them play London Docks, and I'm really curious to see how they play in Arden Forest now. Very excited to see how this is indeed going to go. Kind of a <laughs> very bad hard point to talk about. And even it's like most of the time they were in a position where they had to break the hard point where it was never going to happen. Just m majority of the kills in favor of gravity. But even when they were playing on defense, remember in the first rotation they had Castle Road spawns and they were holding it. They were in a position. They got a little bit of points on pit center and then went to Castle Road, had the full setup. But then one player got behind enemy lines. Who knows how that player got there? What kind of communication or awareness they had around? but the player came behind able to call in streaks and they completely lost castle road which should be an easy hill to defend and get a lot of points on so already on defense they were struggling and breaking the hills throughout the entire hard point was a struggle but we have snd on arden forest loaded up of course we do apologize for that quick break but we're back here with ggea orange versus the sign of gravity it was a dominant victory in map one on gibraltar but now we'll see how the guys on ggea orange can should have wipe away that Hardpoint lost, now into some search and destroy. Animal, with the first blood, finds the second does skies. As uh, early two picks on offense is exactly what you want to see. And be keeping in mind this guy, Animal, quite literally, as his gamer tag does suggest, he's going to be constantly hounding the side of gravity <laughs> when it comes into search and destroy. Being in their face and always trying to find those first bloods can really become a major issue. As hate finds the last player, and now Mayhem in a one versus four awkward spot to be in. And Animal lingering around the corner here inside of you, winning for his teammates. Challenges correctly, and all four men stay up for gravity in that situation. Kind of rather awkward plays for GGEA, I think it's fair to say. Awkward plays, and I mean, nice first blood. I think it was Animal that had the sniper rifle out and really being aggressive towards the B-bomb site, even though he had the sniper. You usually want to, you would think he would stay back onto the head glitch and wait for the defense to push first. And usually it's the defense that have quite the advantage here on Arden Force, but it is gravity striking first and second blood onto offense. They'll be back onto defense. So let's take a look at what the boys from Orange can do, giving that bomb here to Mayhem, the objective player as usual, where you can see this 2 2 split. Two have gone towards Cabin's. Side to checking out B and mid map, but they do get the first blood onto Nick Hate, but that's an answer back from Caesar Skies onto a kill with Nova. So three versus three situation. Yeah, two kills going down, both with snipers as far as the kills being exchanged are considered spoofs. Able to shut down Anal. So the sub battle along with the sniper battle being shown as it currently stands is M Shake. Last up, similar situation to what we saw in the last round. Fire being attempted toward you. You know, see how M-Shake begins to kind of play this as a Mayhem will get the bomb down. And M-Shake's thinking, that, hey, he has to have someone watching over, but that's not the case whatsoever. There's literally no one around him. They're actually on the flank. As uh, only a few more seconds should remain, but no, M-Shake is able to escape only for the time. As a good, well-executed round coming in from the guys on GGEA, kind of hop into that bomb site. I believe we do end up seeing Nova actually pull up that sniper rifle to uh, find the first pick. Granite Skies is there for the trade. But uh, not much longer were they able to stay alive. But keep in mind, streaks as far as search and destroy is considered. Mayhem, along with finding a kill, I believe, also got that bomb down successfully. And uh, like I said, when it comes into search and destroy, getting kind of bomb presence, the objective uh, can really play a huge factor. So I hope that they kind of play two potential streaks for Mayhem. If he can maybe stay alive in this, in this next round, maybe find a few kills here or there, it would be good in their overall uh, scheme of things. Well, a three-man push from Gravity towards the middle of the map. They only send Nick Hate to check over at B, but they get stunned right in their track. So GGEA Orange are aware of this mid-map push. They have Believe over at B, who should be able to spot any sort of cross towards middle or towards the B-bomb site. So extremely cautious plays from Gravity after they got stunned off of that push to see if they can go through middle map and maybe cut through B, or we'll see if they'll go through A. But GGEA Orange have a really nice defensive setup, two towards A, one mid-map, or actually two towards B as well. So they're going to be able to spot whatever bomb that Gravity decide to go to. And you can see this push is starting to go towards B. But Nova should be able to get his sights set onto Oof. M Shake. But Nova with Skies who gets the first shot with the sniper rifle onto Spoof. So first blood here in favor of Gravity. And Skies was trying to provide some presence over toward that A site. And that's what's awkward when it comes to the sniper rifle on this map is... <coughs> If you're the defensive team or the team who doesn't have the sniper rifle in your hands, or is at least facing off against one, there's a lot of different opportunities for positioning to be gained. And a lot of long lines of sight that opposition has to be aware of up close and personal fight. Mayhem able to fin find one, tries to go for the pre-fire, but just a little bit early, wrong point of view checked. 
As we're able to watch this Bronze Star come in through as Hate happens to be in the right place at the right time. Maybe it was a little bit curious as to why Mayhem was firing those few bullets, but uh, regardless, comes from the point of view necessary, takes out Mayhem, and just like that, Gravity respond back with a round of their own. Well, that was a nice duo ship. I've been surprised that Nick Hate didn't go for the bomb plant while the other player chased Mayhem down, but probably not believing in a teammate too much to 100% win that gum fight. So to decide to not plant the bomb and then go for Mayhem after he was injured, pretty solid plan from Gravity as they're going to be on defense. Smokes are all over the map. Yes. But extremely patient plays out of both sides. But looking like GJEA Orange want to go towards water side, but with the sniper rifles on the map, it might be a little bit scary to do that. First and second blood in favor of Gravity. Not looking hot here for Orange on the offense. Yeah, and I'm curious, was that actually the guys from Gravity who tossed that smoke out? Because that's such an awkward placement to be going. If we can actually look through, um, oh, like we look through Mayhem's class, but he ends up falling and there's sort of that spoof does as well. You know, smokes are incredibly useful when it comes down to making offensive rushes when it comes in Iron Force because kind of basically exactly where, where M Shake is sitting, if you throw a smoke either in this exact position or kind of right around it, you block the defensive team for being aware of what bomb site you're going to because you can either head your way toward cabin or obviously go through you into uh, ruins. But uh, I believe the defensive team actually tossed out that smoke to try and blind out the final players from GGEA as they kind of had to make their own type of rush inside. But it looks like, uh, see if any tacticals, lethals, which ones get thrown out. It looks like nades exchange, but for the most part, the guys in gravity, they're relying on pushing this B bomb site. With no smokes in hand. And granted, it could work out for them, but they're really going to need to rely on these first bloods as uh, Gravity backing up. Trying to reevaluate the situation as I believe Animal watching the flank in the backside of his spawn. Maybe even trying to allow a, a potential push with the bombs for the opposite side. Things aren't working out well. Might as well change things up. And uh, Spoof's not known for the sniper rifle. Don't believe he's currently holding that one in uh, back forest. But uh, speaking of snipers, Sky's trying to find a pick. And you can kind of see where that bomb is placed at. If Skies can find a pick or if Hate can find one on their respective bomb site, that's the bombs that they're probably going to check and try to force through as the animal making the rush does get picked off. And now Skies lingering toward the back lines after his teammate drops, realizes that if he falls, the round is most likely over. And it could be over before it even starts. As it looks like Skies does pick off one. Mayhem actually takes out a teammate, so a two versus four is one that could be likely. Skies with the pistol takes out Nova. And just like that, Mayhem. Shuts down Skies, a one versus one. This round that definitely should have gone the way of GGEA could quickly turn the tide. And Hate trying to go for the plant, spots up Mayhem, has to go for the rush, and Mayhem has to go for a full-on sprint. Can he catch him is the question. Only a few seconds left, and Mayhem will stay alive. So kind of down to the wire round, an unfortunate team kill does take place. But regardless, it does go the way of GGEA, as they're still back in this one within one round. Well, like you said earlier, GGEA should have got, they got first and second blood, and then Gravity got two kills of their own, making a 2-2, two -two, and then a 1-1, one -one, tried to go for the bomb plant, and then May or I think it was Mayhem, the last player, just smartly running away. But Gravity playing this really smart, rotating over towards the A side on the last round, knowing that GGEA love to stack B-bomb sites so much, just like they're doing right now. Bomb in favor here of Mayhem. I believe he's just getting it down now. They got the first blood on Animal. It's looking good, but he's taking shots from M Shake, so decides to disengage on the plan. Oh, M Shake jumps around the corner, but believe it's there for the trade. Did he is, guys, trying to stay up for as long as possible. And I'm, I gotta say, I'm, I'm kind of surprised by we're not seeing too many smokes being tossed, because at least when I've seen, you know, kind of search and destroy artists, or, uh, you know, primarily search and destroy players, they really can't rely on pushing this particular bomb set or even one on A without using those smokes. It looks like uh, both teams kind of preferring to have a sniper rifle try to break things open. They don't really use smokes because they have the snipers to try to find those first bloods or try to have that element of surprise. But uh, you see Spoofs having the sniper bullet whistle past the ear and uh, obviously does get the trade in the end there on Disguise. So back and forth in this S&D. And right now if you're Gravity, you're feeling pretty good. As far as things are considered, of course, taking uh, map number one in pretty dominant fashion and trying to continue that momentum to what could be a map number three, of course, on London Docks for some CTF. Now in best of fives, keeping everything in consideration. So maps, of course, still mean a lot, but not as much when it comes into best of threes. You can kind of sacrifice ones from here to there, but semifinals like this, it's never fun to give away a map, let alone rounds like this is, I believe, back-to-back-to-back -back -back rounds. Could be going the way of GGEA Orange in the situation here, Jen, is at least on offense and even on defense, Gravity are starting to crumble. 
Oh, look at this push here from Spoofs. He's coming up from behind the Caesars. And one player left. And did he even get the kill? I didn't even get to see it. Nonetheless, holy cow. That's three consecutive rounds for GGEA Orange, who, I mean, need to crawl back into the series. They had such a bad loss on the hard point. If SD is your strength, you got to win these SDs because. There is a lot of respawns here in a Pesta 5. It's not going to be looking too hot. Only one round differential, however, as GJEA Orange will be back on the offense. Let's take a look at the subjective player here of Mayhem. Or actually, no, they're going to give the bomb here to Believe. So heading four-man rush towards the cabin bomb site. You can see Gravity are stacking most of their players over at B. But Nick and Hay and M Shake are there to see the push. Smoke's being thrown here from the offensive team, I believe, to cut to try and cut off mid-map. Shots being exchanged, and it's really Gravity in the advantage right now taking down three players and i think the reason why we're seeing a lot of or not a lot but these two teams kind of struggling and not really making a whole lot of effort toward this a bomb site on cabin is of course because it's not working as we've seen this last round but also because they're not really trying out similar positioning through mid-map like, there's no mid-map control i was watching the defensive arrows when it came down to that last round and really no one from the side of gravity had anything set up in mid-map and if you're throwing that smoke through um, the way that they were from Bunker, you can maybe even send someone through a flank through mid-map to at least find a pick, at least maybe kind of force your way in a cabin, kind of catch someone off a side angle or even through back tank, and they have no presence there whatsoever. So I think, honestly, if they want to kind of force the issue on A, which we're seeing right now uh, gravity struggle on, on uh, offense whatsoever, if they want to get a bomb down on B or even A, I think they need to have more map, more mid-map pressure. They need to have more mid-map oh, presence spoofs. because there's nothing there. But uh, it looks like Skies does pick out Mayhem, Spoofs and Believe still alive as it looks like Believe does take out one. Animal might be here for the trade, but does get picked off. And just like that, Believe starting to light things up after a slow map one. Picking things up and search and destroy as he's on a three spree. And now Imshake in a one versus two, spawning out both players inside of you. And will not stay alive for much longer as back and forth we go. But for the most part, it has been the guys on GGEA with an advantage. But in this situation... You see Believe picking up the final kill. Very, yeah, I said Spoofs because he pushed all the way through water and it was coming right behind the offensive team. And it was a sort of a super weird push out of gravity. They were trying to rush through mid, got stunned, and got stunned into laying down and waiting there. Which, even though they were able to convert that into a first blood, they sort of crumbled after GGEA Orange are starting to realize what kind of offensive strategies gravity are playing. Got pushing through water and coming up from behind. Believe getting the two-piece there. Nonetheless, new round, new game. Mayhem will be the bomb carrier heading towards Bomb site. Trades going back and forth, but advantage here in gravity as Caesar Sky is going to be dominating over at the B-bomb site, forcing this rotation from Mayhem going towards water. Believe is at least over at mid-cut but Nick Hate will be waiting over at a site. So it's going to be an important gunfight that Believe loses. So now this is such a tough task for Mayhem in a one versus three. And I like the uh, thing that we actually see come out from the guys on Gravity. They actually take out two STG 44s, guys most notably of the two. Swaps off that sniper rifle. Granted, he was playing you know, very well as he just gets gunned from a long range. Mayhem making the PPSH look like a bar. And it's just absolutely destroying... Sky's in that situation, but I was going to say, I really like the uh, the uh, option there from Sky's to, to pull up the STG. He's playing well in general, but obviously realizes what's most important is to kind of have that AR pressure rather than a sniper. As a Mayhem does get decent timing. I'm pretty sure player number four, M Shake, did spot him out based on the arrows. They should be engaging here pretty shortly. Probably going to let him go for the plant, and they're obviously going to get the points necessary after such. As a 1v2 does not get converted. Mayhem, too little time. And so this will be a round 11 for some overtime. And so keeping in mind, this is a big round for GGEA, already down 0-1 in this series. I mean, going down 2-0 along with a round 11 loss in map 2 has got to be pretty defeating, to say the least. Yeah, this is, like you said, all the pressure on their shoulders. We are in round 11. That was nice awareness from Nick Hade, I believe, spotting that player and actually uh, not even preventing the bomb plane, but getting defused right after. His stun's going back and forth. I don't believe it hit anybody mid-map. Nonetheless, you see this very patient place trying to go towards the A-bomb site. They're going to be contested by Spoos. He's watching over Cabin. I think some sniper shots are being exchanged. No first blood going down yet. We can see GGEA Orange love to stack B-bomb and watch cut through there as Nova's going to strike first blood 
on to Nick Haight, really putting the brakes here on to Gravity's offense. M Shake is spotting Mayhem towards the right side of the map, deciding to retreat to Bunker, does not know if he can win that engagement, deciding to move forward with the team and focus on the objective now, as we'll see how this one will go for Gravity. This is round 11, already down one player. It's not looking good. It's not at all. They really have to find a pick in this situation. A two versus four would be deadly on offense. Have to find at least one. Can this one be granted? M Shake trying to take out any players, but no believe is there to find at least two after Nova finding the beginning kill, it's now all left up to Skies, and I believe he does drop in that last situation as GGEA clutch up in round 11, winning this one in the last position possible as they are now going to level the series at 1-2-1. One, one. And honestly, I think when it comes down to overtime, it's really a matter of kind of a bounce back and forth, like, no, you take offense, no, you take offense, no, you take offense. And I think the reason why we're seeing a lot of teams kind of struggle on offense and on force is because we didn't see mid-map pressure. I know I was kind of calling that out a lot throughout this map, but there were no mid-map pressure. There was not a whole lot of smokes being utilized for the offensive team to really kind of rush through a site. And, you know, on Arn Force, it's obviously kind of difficult. I mean, we talk about the head glitches that are available when it comes down to cabin, the head glitches that are available when it comes down to ruins. I mean, generally, what pos what kind of position were they using besides just maybe a snipe rifle here or, a, a, you know, a random peek here or there with an assault rifle to kind of find those first bloods or to kind of use that, those sneaky plays? It was kind of like, you know, both teams were trying to rely on just a first blood with an STG around the corner or maybe catching someone off with a PPSH. Like, there was no real, I want to say there wasn't strategy, but it was kind of like the offensive team was like, all right, well, let's try to find a first blood. If it doesn't work out, well, darn. And that was like a thing that we were seeing a lot throughout this match was that I think the reason why we were seeing those teams kind of rely on that strategy is because they just weren't utilizing the middle of the map. Like, there was no real progression to kind of make it through there. And I think due to that, it makes the teams on offense really struggle. We obviously see the guys on gravity be put in that place when it comes to an offense. I want to say it was Nova who finds the first blood. That kind of messes things up. And I believe Skies, who was looking over toward A, didn't see anyone for the longest time. And, you know, obviously through their picks didn't really go their way and they end up losing the round. But I, I think, honestly, whoever would have had offense coming into that round 11 probably would have lost the round. So, uh, you know, granted, obviously it does go the way of gravity. They lose that overall map number two in round 11. And uh, now we kind of focus our attention towards some CTF on London Docks, which I'm very excited to see. I know this is kind of one of our first uh, London Docks, or not London Docks, but one of our first CTF maps to actually cast in our last two variant tournaments is because I think uh, last tournament it was straight up 2-0s the entire way through. And uh, I think we're definitely going to be pretty well introduced to some capture the flag. London Docks plays incredibly quick. Whenever you lie on three and four downs, you can easily get that flag out. As this one's heavily bla heavily based off SMG play, I think that's one area where gravity can start to kind of struggle with. Because if we know anything about GGEA, they really rely heavily on those SMGs behind Smooth and Mayhem. But exactly, that was a very, very close SND coming down to the wire and gravity getting first blooded, kind of like you said, gave the free win to Orange. You didn't know how to play at a disadvantage like that. But now in CTF and London Docks should be a much slower game mode. Maybe something that GGEA Orange are better at playing. You know, that first hard point was super fast paced. Gravity took a huge advantage, 250, 244, in case you guys missed it. As Spoos will strike first blood towards the top of the map, but you could see an overview that everybody's spread out. Some players, at least two players stacked mid, one player top and one player bottom at all times for both teams. But now you can see this push coming in from GJEA Orange, trying to come through mid map, but they're also losing too many players, already three down. And Mayhem is still trying to play on the offensive, although he should try to disengage and play a little bit of defense. As 7.5 second respawn Tyner, it's gravity that have to go on the offensive and take advantage of getting the three down. But now being too patient, everybody from GJEA Orange are now now back on the defense as Mayhem comes from behind and nice two kills from GGEA Orange show now they're on the offensive. Indeed. So back and forth kind of play. It looks like for the moment it is the size from GGEA who have the advantage. And just like that, Mayhem debating should he go for the flag or should he not? He does. He, it looks like the guys in GGEA, GGEA are preferring the stuns rather than smokes. You see how it obviously works out as three players take down Animal. Definitely kind of struggling in that situation. But on the opposite end, for Gravity, it's M Shake who makes it behind enemy lines and is able to have that flag in his current possession. Flag Carrier, V Flag Carrier, believe ends up dropping the Dolphin Dive. Can it work out? Just needs to find it for M Shake. Plays defense. The offensive one works out well, but Mayhem is going to meet M Shake. Therefore, the nice melee as back and forth play. Both flags get returned, but what a battle that we just end up witnessing on that water side there, Jen.
Yeah, a little bit harder to keep a stalemate going. This is not Arden Forest where you have all the defenses and all the room to spawn onto your flag, but look at the sneaky play from Believe. I don't know if we can take a look at him on the mini bat, but he's all the way into the base of gravity, and he's looking for the flagpole. Knows that Spoof's got a kill, so they have the number advantage. Gets traded out, so it's going to be three versus three. He's got to go towards the top of the map. Mayhem is going to be mid-map. He needs to win this gunfight. There's two players right in front of him. He gets cut down, so now Believe needs to move fast. Spoof is going to be joining him, but it's going to be Nick. Wow. Hate moving through the middle building, so he actually big. grabs <gasps> the flag. Doesn't oh! even decide to go for the engagement, just gets the counter. But believe he's able to take out his teammates. Now Nick Hate ne needs to run for oh his life God. and keep this stalemate going to prevent this cap from going through for Orange. Back and forth. I don't know how Hate was able to escape with that flag. I was getting ready to call out and say, "Well, props to the GGEA for using great map positioning for kind of advancing that flag forward." But smart play coming in from Hate on the opposite end. I know we kind of talked about uh. Prior teammates, of course, both Hate and Spoofs. Prior uh, members of, of uh, Lethal Gaming, along with BZ, who obviously got the witness earlier on Exomoon. So Spoofs facing off against some prior teammates could definitely get some uh, bad blood potentially between the two players. Who knows? But uh, regardless, this guy is making the sneak play, kind of playing as scout right now. And he doesn't really have a whole lot of teammates to help out with his push. As Mayhem takes down Imshake, flag still in the hands of Hate. And coming on the flank, Imshake, like I said, playing very passively as uh, Hate in that position has a fantastic line set to look at. No one most likely is going to be making their way through underground and has a head glitch obviously to utilize. So Hate should be in a pretty prime spot. However, on the opposite end, it could be Believe who does get sawn after and uh, sends out Nova to try and find a kill. <laughs> Just absolutely destroys Imshake there inside a closet. And uh, as the stalemate does progress on, we could be seeing the entire remaining minute and a half along with overtime. Then should be seeing a stalemate if things continue to go the way that they are. Well, even with streaks being called in, both players are inside buildings, able to keep safety from getting taken down from that. So although it did get information, and you see GGE Orange are now on the offense, that Caesars guy that was in a corner, able to cut down Mayhem. So now Nova needs to engage his player. It's an important gunfight if he wants to end the stalemate. And with the 0-0, zero -zero, I mean, both... Both teams don't really, I would say, don't care about the stalemate, but there's no one really under pressure yeah. to end the stalemate. They could go into round number two and start out fresh, but with now the offense from GJEA Orange down, it's going to be Caesar Skies who's going to try and push OK Believe into this top right building. We'll have to keep an eye on him and see what he's able to do, but he's got three players in front of him. Where are his teammates? M Sheik's trying to come from behind. Ooh. This is a nice bait and switch situation, but they both lose the gunfight. Animal's there for the trade. Doesn't matter. He's going to try and engage his one versus three. Probably not going to work out in the last 30 seconds. I imagine this would end in a stalemate. It's possible, but take a look at Spoof's point of view. Player number seven, he's made it behind enemy lines for the time, and he realizes the situation at hand. Trying to go for the passive rush, maybe even waiting for a player to pass it, but takes out Animal, realizes the one versus one is in play, tosses out the stun, trying to bait out Hate, and coming around the corner, can he find the gunfight? Yes, he's able to take it, and that flag should be scored. Where is Believe at? He's going to go for the Dolphin Dive, and he is going to secure this one. Props to Spoofs for making that play happen, but keep in mind, the flag is also now in Spoofs' hands. After taking down Hate, he's still in the enemy base, with overtime being a factor. If Believe can watch this cut, they can also get this flag through yet again, as 50 seconds still remain unless the flag does drop and spoofs could fire in this one as well he could play spoils when it comes Ooh. down to defense and now turning this one into an offensive play and yes just like that the guys on ggea put in two last second flag caps off the back of a fantastic play from spoofs taking out hate in the back lines and also realize that hey no one's back here i can actually take this flag and even score it when it comes into overtime, the newest addition to CTF here in World War II showing exactly why you have to be aware at all times. And Hate isn't able to stay up. And it's just like that. I mean, that was just such a kind of stalemate game in the end of the first half. We're like, how did they get the 2-0? It was just <laughs> overall solid play coming in from the guys of GGEA in total. That was just great plays out of Spoofs. I don't really even know how he got back there or how Gravity had no idea he was there. Not only getting the flag return, getting the flag pulled. And it was Caesar's guys from Gravity that could have stopped it. And he had one huge gunfight to win back yeah. then, nonetheless. Four down for Gravity. GGEA Orange now want to capitalize on this one. And guess who it is? It's Spoofs already there for the flag pull. I think there's there's a gunner on the map, and that's Believe already taking down wow. half the team of Gravity. They're going through mid-map, <laughs> oh, and there's nobody there that can stop them. <laughs> And Mayhem just took out Animal with a stun. Like, the worst possible outcome in that situation is like, okay, well, at least he's going to fight me with a weapon. No, he actually just tossed out the stun to take it. Apologies for, for cutting you off there, Jin. It was just such a uh, kind of an odd play that just 
constantly the uh, startup GGEA are just being awarded with these kills. And Granite, obviously to good use, as Nova wrapping back around takes out M-Shake as they are just kind of drawing circles around gravity, constantly having problems. As you like to imagine, the communication is definitely coming into play for the prior ALG units as they are storming on in this capture the flag. And this is a map, like we said, plays incredibly quick, but once you get the momentum, you start to earn some streaks, you take out players in quick succession, you get that gun feeling pretty hot, as believe, showing exactly why it currently is at triple positive right now on a three spree. I mean, London Docks, it's all about momentum, man. Even in Hardpoint and Search and Destroy, CTF alike, it plays incredibly quick. And uh, obviously, GGA are way too fast for gravity at the moment, as uh, up four to zero, could quite literally be up five to zero, if Believe can basically kind of hide behind that statue as a cover. As Boost finds the one versus one, it looks like a return could come into play, but Mayhem isn't able to stay alive. So at least a positive coming in if you're gravity, you at least stop that fifth potential flag cap. But in general, you're taking a look at that score, you're realizing how much time is left, and it's going to be a pretty defeating feeling. This is super defeating, yeah. And that was a huge stop from Caesar's guy with the double kill, stopping the flagpole. Now they're trying to close in, but two kills here in favor of GJEA Orange. They've completely stopped this push from Gravity after they had three down. Oh. So no flagpole is going to go down here as pretty much everybody from Gravity is down. And if you look at the scoreline, if you look at what happened in the hard point and you look at what's happening in the CTF, this is a whole new oh, yeah. Orange, which sounds like the weirdest thing to say. <laughs> but they were, you just thought they were something different oh, in wow. respawn they were just really were not good at respawn but maybe it was just the map that was not maybe gibraltar something they're not practiced on but they're really showing up in this respawn of ctf starting off with i think two caps in the first two or three caps in the first round and now another two caps make it a fifth cap into round number two with two minutes still remain gravity really can't come back from this yeah, we, I, I think honestly, if you have a child watching this, I would just recommend having him turn away or her turn away because this is just, this is this is over PG-13. This this is just unruly stuff <laughs> that we're seeing the guys from GGEA pull out when it comes to the CTF. But this is kind of like what I talk about, and I know we've been kind of discussing this group because we've been casting with them so much that this tournament. But one thing that we can really point out with this group is that they're solid when it comes down to their hard points. They're solid when it comes into, I mean, we've seen them kind of dominate in every single game mode, and now it's obviously CTF being shown here, but this group just has the communication, and, and on London Docks, right, I mean, there's obviously moments where you can dominate in the slang, but it's really about using, you know, certain routes, kind of making your way around enemy lines, kind of realizing the ping that the CTF flag carrier has. And we obviously talk about what really kind of broke open this game was, was Spoof's play as he actually just takes out animal in that situation. But Spoof's play to kind of pick off hate on the flank in that play. He obviously returns the flag, kind of guarantees at least one capture. Then off of that, grabs the flag and scores the second one. So I think off of that single momentum, they started to kind of gain that calm advantage. They start to feel confident. You obviously can kind of realize here that gravity's calls aren't necessarily on top tier as it stands. And uh, right now, I believe we actually might even see the host in the game just out of pure frustration as uh, this one will end 6-0. to zero. A dominant win for the guys on GGEA as uh, right now, if you're in gravity, you're kind of hoping that they have some short-term memory loss as uh, London Docks Hardpoint will actually be funny enough, map number four. So London Docks, your gravity, you're not getting away from this one. You got to play again another respawn versus this very talented team. However, Jen, it obviously brings up an interesting talking point, right? Hardpoint on Gibraltar, totally different story. Gravity totally dominated them. They went 250 to just 44. And then now we're looking at London Dock CTF. The next respawn, of course, from at number three, total whitewash, six to zero in CTF. Probably could have been even seven to zero or eight to zero after the host would have been in the game. But now it's kind of a mixture between the two. We see a hard point now on the same map. However, I want to bring up when it comes down to this map, the subs. This is exactly where both Spoof and Mayhem can really start to dominate. They really like their Arden Forest. They really like their London Docks. And I feel like this is going to be a major problem for Gravity. And I think you're really going to have to rely on Animal and either M Shake or Skies to really dominate with those subs up close. Because if they can't handle them, if they can't make the correct rotations, I think this is going to be a major problem for them. And potentially their exit out of this tournament here from round number four. Just seemed like gravity was unstoppable in that hard point. GJ Orange couldn't get it together, and the fact that you know the SCD was actually super close, winning it in round 11 was Orange, and now they're crawling back into the series with that six to nothing victory on CTF. So, like I said, whole new Orange that's going on here, and now they get to relive, and gravity gets to relive the nightmare of another London Dogs, but this yeah. time on hard point. But maybe you're gonna give that edge to gravity after they were really um, well versed onto the Gibraltar hard point. So nonetheless, two to one series um, lead in favor here of Orange, where they could possibly uh, take this whole series away in the best of five. 
I'm going to put you in the spot, Jen. I want to know oh. your pred- <laughs> I just saw your face. I'm just like, oh, God. I want to know what's your predictions for this London Docks. Do you think that the guys on Gravity can bring it back to Matt number five after, you know, obviously winning Gibraltar the way that they did? Or do you think the GGEA, I mean, literally the other team stopped the game. They're like, we can't take this anymore. We're, we're tired of this. Or do you think the guys from GGEA close it out here? I want, I want to know your thoughts heading in as we yes. load in here for London Docks. It's hard. I think. Yeah, I said that. I think Gravity gets the edge because they looked so much uh, better practiced on a hard point in general. But GGEA Orange looks so comfortable on London Docks, and you're going to see the similar gunfights and sort of play styles that you saw in the CTF and the hard point. Minus is going to be adding the... Um, the ability of rotations so how well both these teams rotate which we really we gave the edge here to gravity that happened in that last hard, hard point they were able to better rotate and also defend the hills so much better and even break it most of the time where difficult hills like castle road came up and courtyard gravity were dominating as i've said time and time again but now we're in hard point london docks can ggea orange close it out i think that gravity have an edge here Definitely possible. Matt number four underway. It's time for some London Docks hard point. You see Skies, man with an SMG in his hands, most likely along with Animal to start off London Docks. He's going to need to be a major factor, of course, was in the SMD. Even despite the loss, but regardless, it was also a major factor in that first hard point on Gibraltar. But of course, much different map. We take away those ARs. But a PPSH in your hand. But speaking of ARs, though, Noah continuing to rock that one out through Watersight as he ends up dropping first 10 seconds going the way of gravity. But we talked about this hard point here in Statue. Very, very contest heavy. And both teams are going to go back and forth, but two combining for spoofs. Once the third onto M Shake. We talk about the momentum coming in from that CTF. Like I said, shots like that, you're starting to feel your confidence level raise as spoofs is already 5 and 2. And we're only, what, like 10, 20 seconds into this hard point? Yes, it's an amazing scoreline. Orange are extremely aggressive when it comes to hardpoint, when they're able to win their gunfights. But now this is a retake here for Gravity with the last couple seconds. Now we do head into Main Street towards the top here of the map, where you can see GGE Orange are nicely set up. But look at this four-man push from Gravity all towards the middle of the map. It's got their setup for trades. Now can they win the gunfights? It's Believe striking first blood. Nova with the second. And this is a pretty much a perfect hold so far. But Caesar Skies is trying to come through this top left side pretty much by himself. So sort of disorganized push here from Gravity. But can they punish these players here from GGEA Orange? Able to win that gut fight. He steps onto the hill trying to maximize his time here. It's a very close lead. Now only six points will separate this. But gravity are winning all the gunfights the kill feed is all wow. for gravity but can they hold on to this one docs will be coming up in 20 seconds towards the bottom of the map and you can see gravity have already sent m shaken and nick hate there to face off against believe and another player here from gjea orange this is a pretty interesting thing to kind of bring up when it comes down to hard points so far for the guys on gjea orange we've seen them really kind of focus toward the money hills on their respective maps as m shake takes down two off the start when we talk about Main Street, at least as far as stats are considered at Dallas, that was the money hill when it came down to London Docks. Where, of course, very fast-paced map can definitely kind of play either way. But uh, as far as money hills, they don't win it. That was the guys on Gravity who ended up kind of taking back the lead in a pretty dominant fashion, right? They're up by about 20 seconds. And now you said the rotation coming in here toward 10, a.k.a. Docks Warehouse. It was the early sequence of kills coming in from the boys on Gravity, but quickly responded as GGEA start to get their hand inside of the hill. Spoof. Quickly locking down some time, stomping his way inside of Docks. Coming around the corner, a spot that's used normally in Search and Destroy. Could we go out for a few more kills as Spoof says this time finds two. And now could potentially looking at some streaks is when it comes down to this next hard point, really just kind of fading back when it comes into barrel building. This is a hard point where if you hold the spawns correctly, which is exactly what Hate is realizing at this time, if you can hold spawns, you can really start to take quite a few of the seconds, lock down middle and water side. It can be big for your team, but Hate stays alive for as long as possible. Doesn't have any teammate support, but player number four, M Shake, trying to help contest for those. Plakes to actually takes out Nova in the situation. So yes, the current spawns, I believe, are in favor of Gravity for the time being. Trying to rush inside of the hard point, though, time after time are both these teams. The subs are starting to battle it out, and it looks like Gravity are trying to force somewhat of a pinch, but Skies falls, and it looks like while, while the spawns are, like I said, in control of Gravity, they do have that kind of body count control. They have the overall advantage when it comes in a barrel building. So while they're not winning a majority of the gunfights, they at least have quite a few players entering in that hill at all times.
Wow, and that was some very serious, important gunfights at the beginning to secure those spawns for Barrel Building, where Gravity comes out on top. But even with the preferable spawns, GGEA Orange is all over the kill feed, able to hold the hard point, even though the rush is coming in so soon from Gravity. And that's M Shake that was able to stay alive so well. And now Mayhem, Nick is trying to push through completely by himself. He's going to get easily pieced there from Spoof. So a couple seconds left into Barrel Building. We head into Docks, Crane. And this is going to be a little bit interesting. At least the yeah. uh, spawns are in favor of gravity. But uh, pretty much a 20-point advantage here of GJEA Orange. Pretty back and forth hard point. But now I believe we see streaks here from the side of GJEA yeah. Orange. That spoof's picking up two. Now three down for gravity. I think this is honestly the perfect hill to utilize those streaks on. Of course, Spoof's playing very, very sound with an SMG so far in this match. As I believe trying to light a few things up as well. But honestly, when it comes into Docs Crane, I mean, it is such an open hard point one that you really aren't going to see too many players going to focus their attention inside of fire utilizing those streaks is spoofs and just like that his teammate takes or his team now takes over control of this hill during of course party time going back and forth but i really like the play coming in from gga G, gga orange excuse me is the fact that they're at least realizing the situation at hand while the game is obviously going to bring but bring brought back to a kind of level playing field I like the utilization from streaks coming in there from the man spoof. Of course, kind of realizing the situation. They don't let any well, whole lot of time go the way of gravity. And at that, they are able to kind of manage and hold on to their lead for the time. As rotations now end their way back inside of Statue, Nova locking down a few of these seconds watching is toward those opposite side stairs. As back and forth we do go, but lead still in favor of the guys on GGEA. Yeah, and they really capitalized their time over on Barrel Building, sort of back and forth on Doc's Crane. And on Statue in the first rotation, it was super back and forth. I think it was 20 to 10 or something like that. Now, GGEA Orange have Belize sitting on the hill. is going to be caught there from Animal towards the middle of the map. But at least 40 points here in favor of GGEA Orange. Now, we can't let this get out of hand. Gravity has such a performance on the first hard point. But now they're really starting to <laughs> see the potential out of Orange as only 10 seconds left in the Statue. And this has been pretty much all for GG, all the points have been in favor of GGEA Orange, but really Gravity are trying to focus on this money hill of Main Street towards the top. It's gonna be Skies and Shake needs to win this gunfight here against Mayhem, wow. and he does. So now two versus two onto the hill, and the rest are going down for GGEA Orange. Huge two piece out of Animal. Now they hold this first part of Main Street. And you start to see the subs make somewhat of an impact. And that's when they're bringing themselves back into this game. M Shake has a few player models enter his screen, but I believe Skies started off this game heading into barrel building at like two and eight. Wasn't a whole lot of gun engagements. It wasn't playing very well. Now only sitting at negative two on a three spree. Now making a four spree, getting close to some streaks, but runs out of ammo. A huge win for Spoofs, who on the opposite end with that, that with that PPSH is at 25 and a 16. Like I said, when you start to see the subs play better as Animal nearly shuts down three, that's when the guys on Gravity can bring this one back. We start to see, like I said, the lead go the way of GGEA. The subs start to play better for Gravity. That's what can bring them back in this match is having the subs go off, and they really are going to have to rely heavily on Skies to kind of continue this downward performance. He really has to take over this match if we, if we do see the guys on Gravity force that map five over into now we are in Doc's warehouse both teams have been fighting back and forth for the initial control but it goes in here in favor of GGEA Orange but Gravity have been able to keep this a 30 point game at all times now having three stack Gravity are in the number advantage here but not deciding to engage they'd rather contest this one where if this is not going in their favor they need to engage able to get that kill onto Mayhem Nova gets the trade now in a two versus two who can win this gunfight Spoofs able to take down Animal so now with the advantage here in GGEA Orange able to win the important gunfights against Gravity, although Gravity had the initial number advantage, we're not able to capitalize and punish the positioning here from the other team as now this is really getting out of hand for the kill feed. As you can see, it's heading into a 30 plus game, 20 seconds left into docks, and I don't see Gravity really fighting for the scrap time. Yeah, and they might try to go for it just to kind of be aware of those spawns it's kind of on their trip there toward barrel building spawns, but regardless, it is a great positioning kind of setup right now for the guys on GGEA. We'll see how they try to manage this system, kind of trying to set up base rather inside of that barrel building but regardless guys able to peek out spoofs coming from that last hill and shake in the back lines it was hate who did a great job at locking down this hill for them last time obviously realizes the situation the hand kind of gets pinched inside of the hard point does end up dropping and now skies in the back lines not having a whole lot of teammate support as he ends up dropping and you notice all kind of in those last three gun engagements it was a constant 1v3 1v2 battle and that's the issue with gravity who kind of found themselves 
at the end of that Docs Warehouse hardpoint was that, hey, we're losing the last 20 seconds. We don't have spawn control, and that's the issue with either just not having the chemistry or the communication kind of underway or just the lack of slang, and that's something that's going to constantly haunt them throughout this hardpoint if they can't really do things. But just <laughs> as I say that, M-Shake starting to turn things around, finds three along with Animal finding the fourth. They don't have spawn control, but like I said, if they can start to slay out, that's how they can be brought back into this game as it looks like regardless of that big swing of kills in the kill feed, it's still the guys from GGEA who currently hold spawn control, hold the overall hill in itself. And now with rotation coming in toward Doc's Crane, you need to see a big play coming from Gravity. This is their hill. If they can get time down, if they can maybe even utilize some great teamwork, if they can lock down this hard point, they can bring this one back. But regardless, right now it's GGEA who hold the spawns. They are in prime condition. They have looked perfect on these last two hills as far as rotations are considered. With only 10 seconds left, these are a few kills that you can't afford to lose. Spoofs inning things out, potentially on a five spree, getting some teammate control as he shuts down Hate with some help. One more player in front of him, taking him out with the SMG, has the glide bomb and the fighter pilot for good measure. But with only five seconds left, Jen, we'd like to imagine that this series is most likely not going to go the way of gravity in this case. And this is a complete reverse from what we've seen. And just think about GGEA Orange now. Move on to the grand finals to face e United after getting 50-point club on Gibraltar. They're able to prove us wrong with a win on round 11. Um, Arden Forest with yeah. the 7-0 or 7 to even more after the host ended the game on CTF London Docks. And on hard point, we got a 250 to, I believe, 150 or something like that, where they move on, like I said, to face E United. And that's got to be crushing for Gravity. They look so good on that on that first map. I'm not sure what happened after that. Even the, probably pretty uh, frustrated to um, lose in that round 11. That was a very, very close S&D as well, yeah. as it's pretty devastating as well. M Shake finishing 31 and 27. He was going off. He was the guy that got the triple in the barrel building, and they were not able to even retake it. Yeah, I think, like I said, throughout a lot of these matches tonight, of course, kind of being on board with GGA through obviously most of them as they win this one here in a 3-1 and obviously progressed in a face off against E United in the finals, a majority of their success when it came down to hard point was through those SMGs. We see, like I said, it was, um, I believe it was um, Nova who kind of picks things up. I believe he actually rocked the bar, was the, kind of think the only bar throughout London Docks, which isn't too super surprising to see with the current meta being, you know, pretty much sub-based when it comes into London Docks especially. But a lot of the maps for G GGEA, when they found success, were on the sub-maps, were on the up-close and personal fights, when Spoof's going off, when Mayhem is obviously finding streak after streak after streak. I mean, th this is the continuous problem that we're going to see for teams face off against this unit. And, and honestly, if, if this group ends up making it through uh, you know, the open bracket, pool teams have to be aware. Maybe we probably should be banning out London Docks. Maybe we should be banning out Arden Forest, et cetera, versus this group because when the subs dominate, that's when they start to see a lot of success. And that's exactly what we see from Spoof. I believe in one of their prior series, he drops 38 kills. They dominate a hard point. When we obviously see him play here on um, London Docks, he drops 38 kills. They dominate a hard point. So continuous kind of sub play coming from GGEA is exactly what they kind of work off of, of course, with the current meta kind of working out definitely in their favor. That obviously is how things go. But I think it's only fair that we do kind of take a look here in our final series of the night and kind of take a look at how the maps kind of did progress here in our uh, kind of final scorecard as it was Gravity who obviously took map number one. I mean, kind of looking at this series uh, as far as total gen, we see Gravity Gaming come out on Gibraltar and just absolutely wipe away GGEA. I mean, it was kind of a factor of like, wow, okay, Gravity's here to play. Skies, I mean, I think he finishes off 30. Skies was going off. Yeah, he yeah. finishes <laughs> off 31 and 8. It looked like a pub. Like, it was just unbelievable stuff to see. But uh, obviously, in the search and destroy, where things definitely kind of turn around, literally a round difference could have been the, the decision where Gravity is up 2-0. to zero. I mean, honestly, based off of that round, we could be seeing a game five right now if that one would have gone their way. But uh, obviously, in TTF, we actually we ended up seeing the guys on Gravity even in the game early. It was such a kind of dominant performance. But we take a look. Arden Forest, London Docks, London Docks. Maps that are sub-heavy, for the most part, if they already weren't already, and that's where GGEA likes to roam and where Gravity definitely struggled. I mean, you have Animal who can obviously rock that one, M-Shake who had to do it a lot on London Docks, but to me, Skies, at the beginning of the map, was having some problems, and uh, obviously weren't, they weren't able to kind of pick things up as a unit. But we do have to obviously kind of keep things in mind when it comes down to the finals, as it will be the guys from GGEA Orange who 
join alongside of EU United in that best of five final. Uh, if you guys are interested, we actually aren't going to be broadcasting this one here on our channel. We are going to be actually hosting Clayster for those who are curious. And uh, if you guys just want to kind of stay here, obviously realize that that one's going to go down. You can obviously just kind of stay here to the channel, and we'll obviously have that match set up for you guys there too. But of course, major thank you to all of you guys for tuning in for tonight's tournament. We do appreciate the support in our tonight's $2,500 44 variant prime. Uh, Jen, it was awesome to obviously cast with you tonight as well. We got to do some work yesterday. Today was even greater. Got to watch some awesome matches, and uh, overall, it was fun. And we got to watch GGEA Orange just storm through the bracket, whereas mostly 2-0s, and we had the 1 CTF, and this was, I mean, 3-1. Three, three to one. I can't believe they got three consecutive maps after a 50-point club. you got to be arguing with your teammates. I would be frustrated. Oh, yeah. I'd be embarrassed. That's... I don't know if there was a connection problem or what, maybe something else going on with the team. If they had dinner, I don't know. If they had their cup of coffee, I don't know what was going on. But after they got warned out at the hard point, it some nice matches after that. I wish we were, you guys should definitely watch Clayser's stream if you want to watch um, the rest of C. Maybe if GGEA Orange can beat the pro team coming up. Yeah. Um, United have also done amazing on their side of the bracket, taking out Luminosity and a lot of more talented teams on their side of the bracket. And it's for $2,500. I'm excited. I'll probably watch it. And it's, unfortunately, we won't be able to broadcast it. And you guys might have to not see the S and D because pros don't want to share their strats, but the respawns will be available and we'll be hosting Clayster stream like Landon said. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, it is going to be a, an awesome series to watch. I know we can kind of give our predictions as far as who we think is going to win, but it really is going to have to rely for the guys on uh, GGEA Orange to kind of utilize that chemistry, utilize a lot of that control when it comes down to the submachine guns. And obviously you're going to try to battle off against uh, Prestini and co and Clayster, of course, RSD Silly, those guys who have obviously kind of tightened their way through the bracket and have uh, kind of stormed their way on to what is obviously the uh, final four.